Hello everyone and welcome to the first game we'll be showing from the World Rapid Championship. It is a round two game between uh, former 2700 player Denis Kismatulin uh, and uh, world champion Magnus Carlsen. A world Rapid Champion as he is the reigning World Rapid and Blitz Champion and we will see if he's able to, to hold on to those titles. Now first game of course I'm going to show is by Magnus and then uh, every other game I will show is uh, by you guys using the hashtag suggestion. And before we uh, dive into this game uh, I would just like to show you the the venue uh, so you see you know how players uh, are, are uh, treated uh, this is the second game between Magnus and Dennis uh, you can see um, I think that is uh, yeah that's Swidler and Tari in the background and also to the right uh, the uh, rapport is spotted but I don't know who he is playing against uh, and also here you can uh, see Magnus checking out the traditional wares you never he he never shies away from that uh, and uh, yeah always some uh, wonderful photos I might even use this one for the thumbnail uh, but that being said, uh, let's check out the game. And remember, for every next game I check out, uh, and pr I'm probably going to show like two, three, maybe even four games a day as uh, a, lo a lot of games will be played, do use that hashtag suggestion. So let's check it out. Uh, it's uh, 15 minutes per player uh, plus 10 seconds increment. I'm also allowing the clocks to be seen as, uh, you know, can be very relevant. So uh, Dennis has the white pieces and he opens with d4 and Magnus strikes with knight to f6. Uh, and also, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, know this, but Alireza has been spotted playing a tournament. Not this one, a, a different tournament in France, uh, the, the Rowan Open, and uh, I'm guessing he will try to qualify for that candidate's tournament and overtake Wesley as the number one uh, uh, highest rated player to qualify for the candidate's tournament. We'll see what happens. I will keep you guys up so knight to f6, uh, c4, e6, knight to f3, and pawn to d5. So the standard queen's gambit declined is on the board. We have knight c3 and pawn to c6 now going for the semi-slav defense. We have e3 and then knight b to d7 and queen to c2, known as the Stoltz variation. Uh, Magnus goes b6, prepares either bishop b7 or bishop to a6, depending on how white develops. We have c captures, c captures, and now knight to b5, putting pressure on that c7 square. So bishop to b4 check, again, all been played before, nothing new here. Bishop to d2, Magnus trades here, captures, captures, and now castles. And you don't really gain anything by advancing the knight to c7 or, or even the queen to c7. Uh, it has been tried before and doesn't really do all that much for white. So queen, bishop to e2. And now Magnus plays bishop to a6, which is again uh, weird, but it is the top move in the position. And the idea is that if you if you challenge the bishop, of course, now you're not going to bring the bishop back. You actually will give up bishop for knight. You will play a6, put the queen on c7, put the, uh, the rook on c8, quickly claim that c file as the c1 square is not covered yet. Uh, and uh, that's sort of the, the game plan. But instead, we have castles here. Uh, and now Magnus just captures on b5, uh, unprovoked. And it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game. So Magnus concedes a little bit here, uh, but, uh, you know, he just wants to play a nice game. So captures, captures, we have pawn to a6, bishop captures on d7, trading further, and now rook f to c1, claiming the c file. Magnus does the same, rook f to c8, and now queen to d1. We have queen to b5, putting pressure on the b2 pawn, and then is defended with rook to c2. And now uh, it's time to figure out a game plan, and that, like I said in the previous video and the video before that, and before that, it usually involves a move with with the knight back so it's time to improve the position of the knight knight to e8 the knight comes to d6 where it will cover more central squares also gain access to e4 and c4 uh knight to f3 and now rook captures on c2 magnus trades a pair of rooks we have queen captures and now knight to d6 we have pawn to a4 uh, chasing away Magnus's queen, queen back to e8, and now queen to c7, quickly infiltrating with an attack on the b6 pawn. So queen to d8, Magnus defends, and now just rook to c1. Then he says, all right, we can trade queens, but if you trade queens, I'm getting my rook to an active c7 square. And interestingly, Magnus goes for it. We have queen captures on c7, rook captures, and now rook to c8, making... Uh, uh, trade sort of uh, obligatory as if you if you attack the knight then rook to c1 will result in white getting checkmated so here you have to trade rook captures knight captures and now knight to e5 and this is the position that magnus got 
uh, not the not the most promising one uh, or, or of course with the perfect play it should end in a draw but Magnus does have nine minutes on the clock as you can see here and Dennis has three minutes and 41 seconds so let's see if Magnus can push for something here pawn to f6 knight back to d3 and king to f7 of course it's time to bring the king into the game king to f1 Dennis does the same king e7 king to e2 and king to d6 we have pawn to f4 not allowing Magnus to execute pawn to e5 and now pawn to a5 stopping pawn to b4 also takes away uh, the the b4 and the um, uh, c5 squares from the white knight uh, pawn to g4 we have king to c6 and now pawn to h4 even we have knight to d6 and now pawn to h5 pawn to h6 by magnus and now pawn to b3 again taking away b5 and c4 for magnus's knight uh, magnus goes back king to d7 you could advance the pawn to b5 but uh, uh, if you do that you also weaken the c5 square then the knight can come to c5 then he can pressure your e6 pawn so magnus will have to figure out if if that's what he wants to do and when he wants to do it so he goes back king to d7 and now knight to f2 both players will have to find moves uh, and that of course will waste time and now magnus strikes with pawn to f5 and okay pawn to g5 now magnus goes back king to c6 can he get something here knight to d3 now going for that e5 square and now knight to e4 we have knight to e5 with check and now king to d6 and this is where uh, it uh, gets very interesting now you should uh, move the king like king to f3 and then the game continues however g captures on h6 was played it also gets a nice question mark here and now magnus's position is uh, well better and uh, leaning towards winning g captures on h6 was played now comes knight to f6 go uh, sorry uh, first comes um, uh, king to d3 and now knight to f6 magnus goes after the h5 pawn king back to c3 now knight captures on h5 and okay magnus does get a past h pawn but still a knight should be able to hold that uh, we have pawn to b4 and now knight to g3 making room for the past pawn to start marching forward uh, b captures on e5 here with b5 it's still it still could be very tricky but after b captures on a5 uh, he just allows magnus a bit too much but it still looks very hard look at this b captures on a5 uh, and now uh, king to d3 uh, what do you what do you play here the the problem is even if you go for something like knight to f7 check king to e7 and you eliminate the pawn let's say knight captures here uh, knight to e4 with check and the, the there's really not all that much you can do here or even uh, if knight to e5 let's say knight to e4 with checking d3 now king to d6 it's just um, uh, completely winning king c2 king to c7 and after king d3 king to b6 knight to g6 now king to c6 and after knight f8 a uh, king to d6 and uh, uh yeah it's just uh uh, the, the the knight will be remaneuvered over to c4 and you will not be able to to, to defend both e3 and the a4 pawn once the knight attacks it but uh something like that actually happened in the game after b captures on a5 uh king to d3 was played and now h5 not going after the pawn uh knight to g6 as he thought that he will be able to stop the pawn we have knight to e4 and now king to c2 we have knight to f6 uh, and now king to c3 uh, knight to d7 and now knight to h4 so he says all right my king is uh keeping an eye on both of the weaknesses on the king side the knight will not be able to do anything and this knight is blockading magnus pawn so how how is magnus the breakthrough here well he goes knight b6 attacks the a4 pawn king to b3 defending it and now knight to c4 puts pressure on e3 and look at this you often we say that you need the the, the at least two weaknesses to win an end game uh, and here th there are actually three weaknesses this is weak this is weak and of course uh, the um, uh, past h pawn is one weakness that white has to worry about but now comes knight to g2 defending on e3 defending on a4 and also stopping the the pawn push but now magnus finds knight to d2 with check king to c3 and knight to f3 now the knight covers the h4 square and that's uh, pretty much all there is it was in this position on move 50 that denis kismatulin resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here which is good for magnus as he was uh only able to get a draw in the first game he played against um, uh grandmaster from montenegro nikita petrov uh, who was also some 300 points lower rated, but he was able to get a draw here. And here you just resign.
design, there is no defense against h4. Whatever you play, just h4, uh, the pawn is defended, and now h3, h2, h1 will bring Magnus, a queen, into the game. So, a uh, very interesting game. Magnus not really looking for any sort of a novelty in the opening. He just gave up a bishop for knight and then played a, played a normal game. Uh, then he spent a bit too much time, and in the end, uh, he blundered. So, very, very official like game for Magnus. Uh, we'll see what happens in round three. And like I said, use that hashtag suggestion uh, in order for me to uh, spot all of those games that I miss uh, and, uh, you know, uh, for us to check out a variety of players. Uh, so, yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, as usual, uh, sorry, I would like to thank Jack Schroeder, Sadio Adia, uh, Isaac Davis, Martin Georg Paparik, and Timothy Rosen for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up uh, what's uh, happening in the FIDE World Rapid Championship, and of course, checking up on your uh, suggestions. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.